In this example, we're going to realize the sequential circuit for our detector problem. So recall in this problem that we wanted to realize a detector for the bit pattern 0011, so that when we have detected this pattern incoming to our circuit, we will output a 1. This problem resulted in the following state transition graph that we have here. And the first thing that we want to do is to make our state assignments, because now our states are called S0, S1, S2, and S3. So what we need to do is to assign to each state a bit pattern. So this can be done arbitrarily, but we are going to use the following state assignment. So for S0 to S3, we are going to need two state variables. We call them Q1 and Q2. S0 we will call 00, S1 we will call 01, S2 10, and S3 we will call 11. When we have done this, when we have named our states in this way, we are ready to write our truth table. So in our truth table, we will have as input to our functions Q1 and Q2, and we will also need our input x, which is the input sequence to our detector. Then the output we need to define will consist of the q1 plus variable, the q2 plus variable, and the output of our detector that we call u. So now we can enumerate all the different possible inputs to our circuit, which is eight possible inputs. These. And for each of these input combinations, we need to define what is Q1 plus, what is Q2 plus, and what is U. So starting with the first row in our truth table, we see that when we are in state 0, 0, and 0, 0 is our state S0. When we are in this state and we receive a 0 at the input, what will happen? This is this 0 that we receive when we are in state S0. Well, we will go to state S1, which we have called 0, 1, and we will give the output 0. For the next row, we are still in the 0 state. Now we get the 1 as an input, it is this one, so we stay in our zero state and we will output a zero. Continuing in the truth table, when we are in state one and we get a zero as input, it is this zero, we go to state S2, which we have called one zero, and then we get the output zero. If we are in the uh, zero one, that is the one state, and we have a one as an input, it is this one, we go back to S0 that we have called 00, zero and we output a 0. In the next row we are in state 10, that is state S2, and we get a 0 as input, and it is this 0, so here we stay in the state S2, which is 10, and we get the 0 as an output. The next line in our truth table, we are in state S2 and we get a 1 as an input. It means that we go to state S3 and we have a 0 as an output. Now finally we are in state S3, which we have denoted 1, 1. We have a 0 as input, it is this input here. Here we go to the state S1, which we have denoted 0, 1 with a 0 as output and finally when we are in state S3 and we have a 1 as an input, we will get the output 1 and we will go back to the all 0 state or to the state S0. So now when we have our truth table, we can write our Boolean functions. And there are three Boolean functions that we need to define. One for Q1+, plus, one for Q2+, plus, and one for U. We are going to see later in the course a simple way, an efficient way to do this. But in this case, we will just do as we did previously and we will just look at the different ones in 
the truth table and write the expression based on that. So let us start with Q1 plus. This will be a 1 if we have this row in the truth table, which means that we have Q1 prime, Q2 x prime. Or, where is our next one? It is in this row. So here we have Q1, Q2 prime, x prime. And then we have one more one in our truth table. It is here. So this expression will be Q1, Q2 prime, x. For our Q2 plus function, we do in a similar way. Here we have also three ones that we need to define. The first one will be written as Q1 prime, Q2 prime, x prime. The second one will be Q1, Q2 prime, x. And the third one, which is in this row over here, we will have Q1, Q2, x prime. And for the output function u, this here we have only one one in the truth table, and this is given as q1, q2, x. So what we can see here in our truth table, if you want to be a little bit clever and minimize this in some uh, trivial way, we can see that since in this row here we have a one for both Q1 plus and Q2 plus, we can see that this expression here and this expression here will be same, so we can reuse the gates that we're using for those two expressions. So here we have the full realization of this circuit. What we can see is that we have a set of AND gates here. So we have six AND gates, and this will correspond to the one, two, three, four, five, six different AND expressions that we have for our functions. And these two will be the same AND gates, which is reused. And you can see here, that this is this one that is reused for both of the functions. And then we have two OR gates. And these OR gates is one, the, the bottom one is the one that is for the expression for Q1 plus, and the top one is for the expression Q2 plus. You can also see that the top one will go down here, it will become Q2 plus, and after clocking the circuit, it will move to Q2. We can also compare this to our canonical form of the sequential circuit, where we had a set of inputs, a set of outputs, a combinational circuit, and our memory elements. So if we compare this to the realization that we have, the combinatorial circuit will be the part that takes x, q1, and q2 as input, and u as output, and also q1 plus and q2 plus as outputs. Our memory elements will be the two d elements that we have down here.